Hello everyone, welcome to my channel Aspire Doctor. This is Dr. Namita, hope you are doing great. In this video, I am going to discuss about morphology of flowering plants. So before we start, let's understand the term morphology. So what do you mean the term morphology is? It is the study of physical form or external structure of anything. As we are studying about the plant's morphology here, we are studying about the external structure of the plants which we can see that is root, stem, leaf, inflorescence, flower, fruit, seed which we will cover in detail in this chapter. You will also frequently come across the term anatomy. So what do you mean the term anatomy is? It is a study of internal structure of anything like plants, animals, humans etc. As we will study about the plant's anatomy here particularly we will study about the parts present inside the plant that is tissues like xylem phloem which we will cover in my upcoming videos now let's start the topic root we have mainly two types of root systems that is tap root system and fibrous root system and third type is also present which is adventitious root system Mainly we have tap and fibrous root system. So coming to the tap root system, it is majorly seen in dicotyledons plants. Dicotyledons plants are also called as dicots. These are flowering plants which have two cotyledons in their seeds. So this is a dicotyledon seed and it is a radical. We know that all roots are formed from radical with some exceptions. So from the radical, Direct elongation occurs, leads to the formation of the primary root. This primary root in turn gives branches. These branches are called as secondary roots. These secondary roots gives branches which are called as tertiary roots. These secondary and tertiary roots together are called as lateral branches. The primary roots and its branches together constitute the taproot system. So example of taproot system is carrot. I hope you are clear with taproot system. Coming to the fibrous root system, it is majorly seen in monocotyledons plants. Monocotyledons plants are the flowering plants which have only single cotyledon in their seed. So we will cover the dicotyledons and monocotyledon seeds in our further topic seed. In fibrous root system, the root is also formed from the radical, but here the primary root which is formed from the radical is short-lived and is replaced by large number of roots. The, sh the primary root is absent here. You can see in this diagram the primary root is absent and it is replaced by large number of roots. Roots originate from the base of the stem in fibrous root system. Example of fibrous root system is wheat plant. What is the major difference between tap and fibrous root system? Here the primary root is persistent. Throughout the life of the plant the primary root is present. Here the primary root is short lived. Primary root is absent throughout the life of the plant. So I hope you are clear with tap and fibrous root system. Next coming to the advantageous root system. Roots arise from the parts of the plant other than radical. Generally roots are formed from where? Roots are formed from radical. But in this case roots arise from the parts of the plant other than radical. So examples of advantageous roots are grass, monstera and banyan tree. So with this we, co we covered the types of root systems. I hope you are clear with it and coming to the functions of root system. So functions of root system are absorption of water and minerals from the soil. Generally the root absorbs water and minerals from the soil and the stem distributes these absorbed water and minerals to all parts of the plant. Root for absorption and stem is for distribution and next is the providing proper anchorage to the plant so the root 
gives proper support to the plant storing reserve food material the food material is prepared by the plant and the excess food material is stored in the roots in some roots of plants in the form of carbohydrates and starch and water etc next is the synthesis of plant growth regulators so the plant growth regulators are the substances which regulate the growth of the plant so these plant growth regulators are synthesized in different parts of the plant some of them are synthesized in the root these in depth will be covered in another chapter next i hope you are clear with the functions of the root next we will deal with the regions of the root we have primarily four regions of root root cap region of meristematic activity region of elongation and region of maturation you can see these parts clearly in this diagram so coming to the root cap it is a thimble like structure it covers a root apex the function of the root cap is protection it protects the apex as it make a way through the soil during its growth so next is a region of meristematic activity it is present few mm above the root cap so this is present above the root cap what is the meaning of meristematic activity meristematic activity meaning is it divides rapidly though so the cells in this region are very small thin walled and have very dense protoplasm they divide rapidly next is a region of elongation understand that it is used for the elongation of the root so the cells in this region undergo rapid elongation and enlargement cells here undergo division the divided cells undergo elongation and enlargement so the function in this region is growth of the cell, growth of the root in the length growth of the root in the length next is a region of maturation the cells in the region of elongation they differentiate and gradually mature to form the cells in the region of the maturation so you can easily remember in this way here the cells divide the divided cells they elongate they enlarge and the enlarged cells they differentiate and they become mature to form cells in the region of the maturation zone in the region of maturation you can see the root hairs present these root hairs are delicate thread like structures they develop from the epidermal cells present in the root region of the maturation the function of the root hair is they absorb water from the soil i hope you are clear with the regions of the root and next we will deal with the modifications of the roots roots in some plants change their shape and structure and become modified to perform functions other than absorption and conduction of the water and minerals they are modified for support storage of food and respiration so we shall study the modifications of the root they serve different functions other than absorption of water and minerals here in the storage roots they store food in the prop root and slit roots they are used for the support and in the nematophores they are used for the respiration so basically there are four types of roots present here in the storage roots the food is synthesized by plants so the excess food in some plants are stored in their roots in the form of starch carbohydrates water etc so the roots get swollen and they store food this storage roots are present in swollen tap roots or swollen adventitious roots so examples are in this chapter are very important and examples of swollen tap roots are carrot and turnip this is carrot and this is turnip you can see this roots present here and uh, the swollen adventitious roots example is sweet potato next coming to the prop roots 
prop roots are hanging roots so the example is banyan tree you can see the banyan tree has many hanging roots they grow in size and they grow downwards and reach the ground and they go into the soil thus they support the tree they support the roots and also branches so these are called as prop roots so they as they give support they are called as supporting roots example is banyan tree next we go to the stilt roots stilt roots are also supporting roots there are two types of supporting roots prop roots stilt roots stilt roots are the roots which come from the lower nodes of the stem this is a node this is node node is a part where we get the leaves and internode is the part which is present between this is the node and this is the internode so the still roots are formed from the nodes so these still roots as they grow downwards they reach the ground and they grow into the soil and they support the stem along with the roots therefore therefore they are called as supporting roots so supporting roots are prop roots and still roots the example of still roots are maize and sugar cane next nematophores these are also called as respiratory roots as these roots help in the respiration of the plant generally the plants growing in the regions of saline swamps marshy places and salt lakes are called as halophytes so that such plants may have roots coming out of the ground and grow vertically upwards such roots are called as nematophores they help to get oxygen for respiration these roots appear like conical spikes coming out from the water they occur in large numbers near the tree trunk we have we can see here near the tree trunk we have large number of roots so exposed root tips possess the rhizophora minute pores through which roots respire some pores are present in these roots which are used for the respiration of the plants so example are rhizophora memorize the examples by remembering the diagram so that you can easily remember the examples examples in this chapter are very important so just memorize just revise the examples of modifications of the root storage roots examples are swollen tap roots are carrot and turnip swollen adventitious roots are sweet potato these are formed from tap root system these are formed from adventitious roots next example of prop roots are banyan tree next examples of still roots are maize and sugarcane for nematophores rhizophora i hope you are clear with the modifications of the root and uh, please memorize the examples i hope my notes are helpful for you and thank you for watching the video if you like the video please do like share subscribe and the click bell icon to get notified if you want me to explain any topic you feel difficult please comment below and if you have any doubts also please comment below i am ready to explain those doubts in the next video